How many of you all have this book already? Nobody? I do. <laughs> John Bryant? This is, I, I don't know how many of you know me, don't know me. I'm a journalist. I, I am a business owner. I am an activist. I uh, care about our community and work to, to try to better the community. Um, and I met Tyrese actually through John Bryant. Um, as he was beginning to build his 5MK movement in Los Angeles. And uh, we connected at that moment and it started uh, a fantastic friendship. And so I came because I wanted to support um, the work that he's doing to talk about this book. And I think what we want to do for the next couple of minutes is talk less about the book um, and talk a little bit more about uh, who Tyresa is as a business person. Um, as you all are attempting to do business. A lot of times people learn the science of business and still don't know how to do it. Um, and so there, are, as I think Frank was talking about, some, some key principles um, between those who ultimately work for somebody else's company versus those that own their own company. And those that make money for somebody else's brand beyond those that either build or become a brand. And so, um, Tyrese, I, 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 we can get into some of the pieces of the book. But I think what would be most interesting for these students to hear is when did the kid at the back of the bus smiling and singing for Coke <laughs> realize he had to take control of his own brand to own it so that somebody else did um, I used to work for Tyrese Gibson. And then I became the CEO of Tyrese Gibson. <laughs> very big shift. Um, when you work for yourself, you can also tap into the spirit of self-sabotage and self-defeat because you're not operating from a place of love. You're just on a mission to get money. As Jeff, I mean, as uh, Frank said before he left, um, and it's okay. I mean, I would never, first of all, this is not a speech. I didn't practice this, this ain't no rehearsal. I'm just kind of, we just here. All my brothers and sisters, and we just here chilling out a conversation over this mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it became this situation where when you broke and you hungry as, as I was, I would love for y'all to stop talking in the back if y'all don't mind. They're going to be here when I leave, I promise. <laughs> um, it's one of them situations where when you when you broke and you're hungry and you're stuck, hmm. it's, it's the worst feeling ever. Mm -hmm. It's like I want to eat right now hmm. and I can't. Like, I don't want to be here right now, but I can't leave because I don't have a car, I don't have no bus fare. Even if I was going to jump in my boy's car, he asked me for gas money, I ain't got it. And so as much as I also agree with passion, <laughs> when you're dealing with the harsh reality of where you are financially, and listening to your stomach growl over your conversations. <laughs> it's a harsh reality that you own. And you make it yours. And it became a part of my personal motivation to get out and figure something out. There's got to be more than this. Mm -hmm. And obviously, because I was born and raised in Watts, South Central LA, Born in Martin Luther King Hospital in 78. I didn't move out of Watts until I was around 17. 32 now. I'm grown. <laughs> I look back, I'm like, man. I wasted a lot of money. <laughs> the motivation is money when you don't have it. The motivation is food. 
And when you get it, you feel like you want to spend it all and make up for all the lost time. And that becomes the downfall of a lot of black people in particular. Because our parents instill in us, go out here, get money, get your careers off the ground, go to school, do this, do that. But they don't teach us how to keep our money, mm -hmm. how to invest our money, what to do with the money when we get it. And so you show up proud. Mama, look, I made all this money. And you go off and buy 12 pairs of the same shoes in different colors. Hmm. <laughs> For what? <laughs> But you just feel like you need to get it out of your system because you ain't never been able to do that before. You went to the shopping center, to the swap meet, to the mall, you're trying on all these shoes. Y'all looking at the videos just like me. Look at that handbag right there. <laughs> Man, I want that. Mm -hmm. Look at those shoes. Look at that car. Look at this jewelry. All this bling bling and all this ice. I want that. I want to get these reactions that come with wearing this shit right here. I need mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then you get it spend all this money on it trying to live up to mm -hmm. the hype, the concept of what cool is. You pulling up in a nice car, and you ain't got gas money. Hmm. You got the biggest, nicest jacket on, it's warm, it's fur, you got the coldest heart. Got all the materialistic things you could ever imagine. These women ain't even baiting you for who you really are as a man. Mm. They like you because of your car. Mm. You're having babies with a big old butt. You don't mm. even like the woman. Mm. It's harsh, uncomfortable truth that a lot of us live in. And so, for me, when I wrote this book, It wasn't about an opportunity to write or add another slice on my name, singer, actor, and then slice, slice, slice. That's cool. That's a nice accolade. When I get introduced, I don't even like long introductions. I'm like, look, I ain't got time to listen to anything <laughs> I've achieved. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, <laughs> it's like, I'm here, let's have a conversation, let's talk about it. Um, I just think for me, I just want to say a few things. I'm so proud of y'all. Praise God. Mm. Y'all have decided to be better than your father. Mm -hmm. You decided to be better than your mother. She may have had you when she was 16, 17. You decided to break the cycle and be the total opposite of everything that you grew up around. That's what I decided to do. Before I even knew the concept of breaking the cycle, I was already doing it before I even knew what it was. In 32, I have access to and I know and have partied with and hung out with some of the biggest, most mega, most famous, the wealthiest, the multi-billionaires and millionaires of the world including myself. I don't drink, I don't smoke, you would never catch me high. Birthdays, holidays, I'll never sacrifice my faith in God, mm. my sexuality, mm. ever to get to the next level. If that's what it takes, I don't want it. Mm. So I say to everybody in this room, including the adults. At some point, you have to decide to take advantage of America. Mm -hmm. You have a choice. Mm -hmm. There are people right now that are working in a corn field, in a rice field, mm -hmm. in the middle of Asia, making 13 cents a week. There is no other option to make any more money, or they would probably go and get it. And if you walked up to that little Asian lady in the middle of that field and said, hey, if I gave you an opportunity to go to America to take advantage of everything that we have right under, right under our, here, right under our noses, would you be willing to let me cut your left arm off? Mm -hmm. Like literally 
pull out a knife and just cut your arm off. She'll throw her arm out there so fast and say, I don't care, get rid of it. Because this is all they have. Mm. America's the only country you can go from being homeless, like my mentor and friend in the back of the room, John Bryant, to being a multimillionaire in the same year. Mm. Change your mind. Mm -hmm change your environment, change your life. So it wasn't an opportunity to write a book, to add another slice. It was a responsibility to you. Um, and you'll see, for, for those of y'all who decide to get it, it's called How to Get Out of Your Own Way. Hmm. I was inspired by that man in the back of the room. When I first started hanging out with him, I came to him because I was doing some charitable work. And Watts showed up to his office. He was sleepy and tired as hell, downtown LA. And it didn't happen in the first conversation, but as we got more acquainted and started talking, he said, you know what your problem is? You're in your own way. You gotta get out of your own way. Hmm. Hmm. And then he didn't really explain what that was when he first said it to me. He just kind of left me with that. And I'm like, well, damn, well, what am I going supposed to do with that? Because <laughs> hmm. uh, most people don't even know that they're in their own way. You know, it's like, anybody in this room got kids or a child? Anybody? <sighs> any of the young adults, anybody here? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's the second time this happened to me today, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> I was just over at Morehouse and I asked that same question and not one man raised their hand in the room and I just can't even wrap my head around it. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm applauding y'all. <laughs> <laughs>